Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. So again. Welcome back for another lesson of biology. Today we are going through lesson nine about the inheritance part two. Before you start the video, please like and subscribe my channel. Also share the video to your classmate and remind them to do their revision at home. We are going to go through some exercise and examples right now. All right, let's start. Now let me show you some questions so to familiarize yourself with the new terms. On the picture here, it shows the characteristics thing, of this flower as white. But in genetics, we don't use the word characteristics. We use the word phenotype. It's a specific term we use in genetics. Second question. The allele which have a stronger power to express itself is called it. You have the idea of dominant, a dominant allele. Showing here, you have a genetic diagram to show the reproduction of tall and short plant to give the offspring. Now the parent, the tall plant and the short plant, both of them is going to produce something to carry the genetic information to the offspring. What is that? It should be the gamete. The male gamete or the female gamete. For the human, it would be the sperm and the egg. For the organisms which receive the same type of allele from both parents, for example, for the height, such as big T, big T, or small T, small T, same types of allele, what do we call them? We call them homozygote. Mendel says that for the parent plants, such as the tall plants, it has the big T and big T together. When it gives the gamete, it's going to only give one of it, only one allele. So therefore, we call this the first law of inheritance or the law of secretion using the idea of meiotic cell division. After so many examples and explanations, I think you should try on your own. Let's try the case of dimples. And I give you some hints. Use Big D. Let Big D be the dominant allele of dimple gene, and let the small d be the recessive allele of the dimple gene. To begin with, let's assume that, that both parents are homozygote. Or we can call it pure breed. Sunchong. All right, so let's start with the parent. So you have a parent with dimple, and then you have another parent without dimple. So let's write down their genotype first. What big D or small d do they have? For the homozygous parent with dimple, pure breed, they should have both the allele big D and big D because they are homozygous, homo, that means the same allele. And then after that, you have to put a cross in the middle because they reproduce with another parents with doubt dimples. So if a parent is homozygous with doubt dimple, you should get small d, small d. And afterwards, you have to write me the gamete that they formed. So for the big D, big D parents, dimpose parents, they are going to only form one type of gamete, that is the big D. For the parents without dimpose, they should only form one type of gamete in here, small d. And afterwards, it's going to do fertilization and form the F1 generation, the first offspring, first generation. Here we go, you put them together, you have the big D and small d. What is the phenotype that is shown for the F1? It should be with dimples. This is how it works for the first genetic diagram. What will happen if the first generation which is a heterozygous big D small d, 
he or she tries to reproduce with an other partner, which is also a heterozygous. Big D, small D, let's write it out. They are going to form gametes. And it will form the gamete, it looks like this. Big D and small D. This one as well, big D and small D. And after that, for the offspring, that means the F2 to be precise. They are going to join up the gametes randomly with the other partner, like this. This is one possibility, big D, big D. Another possibility, big D, small D. Another possibility, big D, small D. The final possibility, small D, small D. And now, what do you see? You will be able to see the first three, they all have dimples. And the final one, it has no dimples. What is the ratio that you get? You get 3 to 1. And for the part of the dimples without dimples, this is the phenotype, the characteristics. That's it for this lesson. I know it's a little bit long and it's quite complicated, but don't give up. Try your very best. If you don't understand, watch it again and again. Ask me any questions when the school starts. I will try to help as much as I can. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.